Look at that. What a beast. They love it here among the potatoes. That is the last potato leaf you'll ever eat. It's nearly midnight. I've had my dinner and I'm out on a mission to prevent others having theirs at my expense. Caught in the act. Slog on carrots. That is a fair cop. One little tip I was given is put out half oranges because they're real slug attractors. And here's a slug who isn't going to get to finish his meal. And here's a slug who's eating my lamb's lettuce. Arrgh! Slug! No! I'm averaging around a dozen fat slugs a night. An excellent protein boost for my hungry chickens. It's high summer and four months since I left the city and Dorset is finally getting some sunshine. My livestock is thriving and thanks to my vigilant weeding and slug hunting the veg is looking pretty good too. This morning my organic guru Michael Michaud who helped me get this little plot started is coming to check on my progress. He's also coming to check on his fee, one river cottage ham. Hi, Michael. Hiya. What are you up to? You're just in time for a shower. Yeah. Look at how happy they are, huh? They're doing it's, all right, aren't they? One. Yeah, they're not doing too badly. When are they going to go to the abattoir? I'm trying not to think about that at the moment. I'm just keeping them happy. You're already thinking about your leg, are you? Yeah, well, that was part of the deal. No, you're yeah, going to give yeah, me a leg. Yeah. I'm back here to check things out. Well, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer for that leg, but uh, I've got a few things in the garden you can taste. Yeah. How are they looking? Some not so good, some very good. Well, Come and have a look. Come and have a look. Been that sort of year anyway. I'm not surprised. The prolonged wet weather has taken its toll. My potatoes in particular are looking badly blighted. Tell me, am I going to get a crop here or have they... Yeah, I'd keep spraying if it were me. Keep going because, you, you, you know, it'll go until September. You, you do have a bit of a problem with the sunlight here. And it's just about trying to keep them in as long as you can and just, just be thankful for what you get. Yeah. Um, don't yeah. give up your local greengrocer, though. You'll need them by the end of the day. Oh, please. There's a happier patch down here. Yeah, what we got? Oh, and look at the tomatillos. These exotic fruiting vegetables are a new arrival in this country and a minor obsession of Michael's. I love harvesting tomatillos. You just go along and feeling them like that. I, get, I think I get some sort of a sensuous pleasure. So what, what do you think is a good way to use these? Well, you can make a, what's called a green tomato salsa. You, I thought they might make a nice chutney ingredient. It'd be interesting to see. They got a really herbaceous taste. To them. Mm. It was re really a nice one. Some of the carrots didn't come up at all, but the ones that have are looking pretty good. Yeah, well, you probably, it's probably due to the ubiquitous slug problem. They probably germinate in the slugs ate them. Oh, lovely. So you've got absolutely spot-on soil for this. It's really light textured. Now, that's not bad. Nice orange color. And, of course, you've written down the variety, so you can grow <laughs> the same thing next year, right? It's called eating variety. <laughs> yes. Carrots for eating. Yeah. My God, Hugh, what are those? The fennel. That's the highlight of the tour. I was saving them for you. I knew how much you liked Lucky them. Lucky you. What's the best way to just cut it right below? Well, you know, the... no, what I like to do, I actually like to leave a little bit of the base there because they'll actually sprout baby fennel. So you can get two crops out of one. Oh, right. So rather than just go all the way down to the one, leave about a quarter of an inch of the base. Pretty hefty, aren't they? Yeah, they're not bad. Yeah, these are marvellous, though. I love, it's my favourite vegetable. A bowl of free-range mayonnaise, half a dozen carrots, a fennel bulb and a couple of baby courgettes equals lunch. Absolutely marvellous. Excuse me while I make a pick of myself. Please go ahead. Mm. Mm. Last time you were here, you described it as a war. Mm -hmm. and there have been several major battles, mm -hmm. but today feels like victory. I think it's something like what women must feel with childbirth. You forget the pain once you're actually holding a child. Okay. I mean, we can't understand it, but that's the only the thing I can, can do think about. Mm-hmm. I think so. <laughs> Absolutely. Cheers. I'm not the only one growing vegetables around here. Practically everyone's at it. In fact, there are so many proud gardeners gloating over their crops right now that it all starts to get a bit competitive. And the competition reaches its peak this weekend at the Beminster Horticultural Society's annual summer show. I'm entering, of course, 
But as a first-timer, I've come to see if I can squeeze Hello. a tip or two from Roy Gunning, Hello. who's training to be a show vegetable judge. I should have guessed yes. I'd find you in the garden. Yes, you certainly will this time of year. I'm hoping Roy can help me fathom the arcane mysteries of the show schedule and advise me which classes I might have a chance in. Roy has been entering the Beminster show for the last 25 years, and his longest beans are legendary. You're entering the longest bean. I am. And it's also sponsored by Mr Gunning. <laughs> yeah. is, that your, is that your brother? No, it's me. That's a bit cheeky, isn't it? <laughs> well, I've won it so many times, I thought I'd better sponsor it. How many times have you won it? Ten, eleven years. In a row? When did you last not win it? I haven't. You've never not won it? No. What's the secret? The strain of bean. You must have the strain of bean to get a long bean. What about carrots? I've got some quite nice carrots. Yeah, so have I. Are you entering carrots? Oh, yeah. How many categories have you entered? Twenty. Twenty? <laughs> yeah. Out of 27? Yeah, but I, I want to win the cup for the first time. You've never won the cup? I've never won the cup. What, so it's the so. overall vegetable cup? Mm -hmm. I don't think I've got much hope of that. Anyone for tea? Roy's veg will take some beating, and rumour has it his wife Barbara's no slouch in the home craft department. That's a very nice cake. It's pork raspberry jam, though. Not homemade? No. Is it a difficult one to win? Yes. Because I thought I'd have a go at that. The Victoria sponge, the traditional, is with raspberry jam. Well, funnily enough, I made some raspberry jam. And not only am I going to put it in my sponge, I'm hoping to enter it in the show. I think it's pretty good, but I want you to tell me what you think. Ah, right. Here so, we go. judge. For start, <coughs> the lid. No. What? Why? What? It's a metal lid. Traditional jam, you have a wax disc and you have a cellophane top. I thought I could do either these days. I thought I thought things had moved on a bit. No. You've got a, I've, I've got the wax, wax disc. You have. Let me say, this is the bit. A bit runny, Hugh. Is it really? It is a bit runny. Oh, oh, that's gorgeous. Is it really? Oh, it is. Oh, that's Morris. Yes. That's a good reaction. Mmm, that is. Oh, they've got the raspberry taste well into that. So what else are you entering in the home craft? I'm going to enter some chutney. Really? Have you made it already? I have. Because I want to do chutney, but I haven't made it yet, and I'm just worried about whether there's enough time for it to sort of mature. You've left it a little late, actually. Do you think? But when did you make yours? Sunday. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. It smells really good. It smells very spicy. There's not a lot of spice in there. Really? So you're entering this? I am. It's going to be hard to beat. You think so? Well, I'm going to have a go. Well, we'll meet on the day then. We'll meet on the day. Gun, guns in Bemister Town Hall. Chutneys at dawn. <laughs> yes. The secret of a really good chutney is to get a harmonious blend of sweet, sour and spicy. But at the heart of it all, the bulk and body of the chutney, I've got my marrow, my overgrown courgette. I've got soft brown sugar for sweetness. I've got these lovely tart cooking apples, which have also got the pectin that should set the chutney. I've got some sultanas that are already soaked in vinegar. And I've got some onions, which will give lovely depth of flavour to the thing. My spices, dried ginger, cloves, peppercorns and whole coriander seeds. But I've also got a secret ingredient which I hope is going to shock the judges into rashly awarding me top prize. My tomatillo. I'm dead impressed with these little fruits. And I think they'll be perfect in a chutney. They've got a sort of really zesty flavour, almost like a cross between a tomato and a lemon. Just the thing. Once the tomatillos have been coarsely chopped, they join all the other ingredients in a large pan. Half a litre of white wine vinegar goes in, and then all my spices wrapped up in a muslin bag. After two hours of gentle simmering, it's beginning to look like the real thing. They say that a good chutney, when it's finished, 
parts to reveal a clean bottom of the pan, parting of the Red Sea. And it tastes sweet, sour and spicy, pretty good. I'd just like to somehow cheat a little bit more age into it. And that's why I've got this 10-year-old balsamic vinegar, which I hope could do the trick. Now it's time to pot the chutney according to the WI guidelines for show presentation. All preserves must be in an imperial one-pound pot. Chutneys should have plastic-coated screw-top lids to prevent the vinegar tarnishing the metal. The label must show contents and date and be positioned one-third of the way down the pot. The limestone reefs of the Dorset coast are a haven for all kinds of marine life. And just a couple of miles from the harbour here at West Bay, one reef has become the scene for a bizarre annual phenomenon. Spider crabs come in their thousands. Nobody seems quite sure why, although it's almost certainly got something to do with sex. A spider crab orgy? Now there's a concept. It's 7 a.m. and I've teamed up with some local divers who are planning to take a closer look at these mysterious crustaceans. The skipper of our boat, crab potter Dave Sales, has known these waters all his life. We like to think we know what there is to know about spider crabs, but in actual fact we know very little. So what do you think is going on down there now, these huge piles of them? What's well, it's part of the mating process. They always come in very close to the shore this time of the year and they'll go soft, change their shells, mate, and then they move off again. And they're a bit like a thief in the night. One day they're, they're not here and the next day they are and it's exactly the same when they move out. They're quite odd looking, aren't they? They are quite That's odd spooky. looking. Some of them, you know, almost six foot across. They're six foot across? Yes. Uh, Apparently the spider crabs here are six foot across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit. You know what fishermen are like. You know, you put, they fire up and put their arms and claws at you and you sort of stand back a bit. These monsters command hefty prices on the continent, but in Britain we can hardly be bothered with them. Even my diving companions, who regularly forage for their dinner, aren't keen. So why don't you eat spider crabs? There's too much else down there. You look at a spider crab, you think, it's fiddly. You've got a big edible crab next to it. I'll take that instead. But spider crabs could be even more delicious. Yeah, they could be. I've never tried one, so... You could be convinced. I could be convinced. Dave reckons our best chance of seeing the undersea orgy is on the reef just 50 yards off the beach. Diving must be the one sport where getting your kit on is more exciting yeah. than getting it off. But you always want to do it quickly. I'm buddying up with Eli, so before we go in, we take some time checking out each other's equipment. That's my kit. I'll get it on and we'll do a quick buddy check once I've got it on. Cheers, Tom. Right. Thank you. Okay. okay. At first, the reef seems completely deserted. But on closer inspection, there's clear evidence that a mass of spider crabs has been this way. Broken bits of molted shell, legs and claws are scattered everywhere. It must have been fun, but the party appears to be over. Eventually, we come across a small group of hardcore party animals. It seems a bit unfair to break up the last orgy on the reef, so we leave them to it. But we definitely want something for the pot, so we round up a few stragglers who seem to have had their fill. Four big ones should do us all for lunch. A lovely pot spider crab, you see that is not quite the six foot we were talking about, but when you <laughs> see that, you, you, you get an for three, you see, yeah. Yeah. So if you get one twice that size, I'm not quite telling stories, am I? <laughs> not quite. I'm impressed. I mean, people say they're fiddly, but there's going to be plenty oh, there's of meat. Oh, a lot in of there. meat in these claws. A lot of meat. And, and in all body, these claws. All in the base and of the in body. here, there's, you know, that is, that is a superb crab. You, you, you get as much white meat off that as oh. you would off a good brown crab. Oh, yes, you would. 
Back on the quay in West Bay, we start the crab cook-up. 15 minutes in boiling water and they're done. Then everybody gets cracking. I'm making a spicy crab sauce for linguine. A little garlic is sweated in olive oil and a finely sliced red chilli is thrown in. Next, a couple of pounds of yellow cherry tomatoes, skinned and chopped. Aren't these tomatoes an incredible colour? They are lovely. The and very, the smell is delicious, isn't it? They're very, very sweet. Once the tomatoes are cooked, the crab meat's piled in and heated through. Chopped fresh chives add an oniony bite and a nice fleck of green. Then the sauce is ready to be tossed up with a mountain of linguine. For me. Oh. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Oh. So sweet. Don't think you're going to get me making this next time we go out on the boat. You'll all have to chip in. No woman thing, though. <laughs> Would we do that, Eli? Yes. Do you think, do you think divers are sexist? Oh, yes. <laughs> are they oh, really? Not at all. No. Yes, you are. <laughs> we would train them if we thought that. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. I'm starving. There is some more. That's what I like to hear. I think I've made a few crabby converts. But there's no time to crow because back at River Cottage, it's showtime. I certainly don't want to be mean with the jam. But with this slightly runny consistency, I'm a little bit anxious about edge trickle. Immaculate presentation is vital if my Victoria sponge sandwich is going to be a contender. The dusting of caster sugar has to be just right. Barbara's warned me that too much is seen by the judges as an attempt to disguise surface flaws. Enough. I think you've got to know when to stop. I think that looks OK and I'm going to go and take care of the veg. I'm tempted by some of the individual classes in the schedule, but there's also a category that calls for six different vegetables on a tray 12 inches by 12 inches. Now this could be the perfect showcase for the River Cottage harvest. But the right combination is going to be crucial. can I fail? It's a vegetable Picasso. Show day dawns and I'm off with my entries to Beminster Public Hall where Barbara and Roy are already preparing for their assault on the cup. I'm told there's a bit of a frenzy as the 10 o'clock deadline approaches. Absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> Morning. nice. <laughs> Thank you. The competition may be fierce, but on the surface it smiles and helpful hints all round. I'm yeah. a bit nervous. I Don't nervous worry, before. everybody's a bit nervous when they start. No matter how impressive your entry, if it doesn't conform exactly to the schedule, it's out. Excuse me, I'm just putting this in for number 25. Is it all right just to sort of... It should be on the paper, really. I'm worried enough about my bulb fennel but if I had a bean that long, I certainly wouldn't want to go out on a technicality. Along with my six veg on a tray, my last vegetable entry is a pair of matched marrows. Size isn't everything. Do you enter often here? Yes. Well, she's won the cup 25 times. She hasn't. Go on, Have you, could, could you tell me some of your secrets? I'll show you. I haven't any secrets. Look. Up against a 25 times winner in Homecraft, I'm in need of reassurance. You've got your pot a little bit over four. But it's said in, it's said in the WA. Excuse me, I've been asked if you can leave. The judging's about to start. Yeah, that's us told off, isn't it? <laughs> it's out of my hands now. And in the lap of the gods, or as they're known round here, judges. It just says pinks four. No, or is that intended to mean four blooms or four stems? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Now go through it, is it? It's got colour, isn't it? Looks good. Good taste, is it? No. <laughs> It's 2.30 and competitors are finally allowed back in. 
Judgment time. I love the smell of fresh tomatoes. Oh dear. No prize for my so-called marrows. I guess they were just a bit too weedy. I thought my lovely bulb fennel was a certain winner, but Mr. Smith, the vegetable judge, found fault. Now, I thought that was a bit special, to be honest. Well, uh, it would have been, and it was very good, but you should leave the leaves on. If I'd left more stalk on, mm. do you think I'd have got a...? Yeah, you would, yeah. But, but you know, you was against a, a very good pine exhibit here, wasn't it? That yeah. cucumber is yeah, big, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. They've advertised a giant, a really giant one, and like that. I said, I'm not going to have it, but now I think I will now, I've seen those. It's a prize. It's not first, it's not second, but it's a prize. Flushed with success, I check up on Roy's progress. Magnificent cauliflowers. Best I've grown. How did you get on with your onions? I had first for the ones passing through a three-inch ring. First for my pickling ones. Oh, yeah, they're lovely. Second for my onion from seed. Well, I should have thought they were very good there. Well, I should have thought perhaps they were worth a prize. That is a fantastic bean. Good enough. The longest I've ever, it's probably the longest in the world. Is that the longest you've ever grown? Yes. Really? Yes. Yeah. What about the cup? No? no second. Second? No. Oh, Roy. Good, good huh? Roy's disappointment is all the keener because for 20 minutes he thought he'd won. Then a controversial recount and Roy was pasted over by his arch rival Ted Smith. To have your hopes built up so high and you think that you've accomplished something that you spent years working towards and then it's gone. Now, what about my home craft entries? Raspberry jam, that's fantastic. Okay. Goodness me. That's two out of three. <laughs> Hello there, how are you? You beat me at the sponge. <laughs> I'm amazed. What about this chutney then here? I haven't looked at the chutney yet. Shall we go together then? Oh, look here. Chutney has a good flavour but needs time to mature. What did I tell you? We can't you... argue with that, can we? Yours was only make... five days old. Yes. If we enter them both next year, we'll get a first and a second. So the challenge is all for next year then, you? Definitely. You up for that? Definitely. See you there. Well, it's been a great result in the home craft, but there's definitely room for improvement on the veg front. I think I'm going to invest my 85p prize money in a couple of Roy's giant bean seeds for next year's show.